Well, in this video, I thought I would kind of quickly show you how these parts get rib stitched. These are all the tail pieces to a single seat pit. And you can see here I have an elevator. This one is completely done and rib stitch. You can see all the stitching on here. The last piece I have to do is the rudder and I will quickly take you through how I get these rib stitched. Now I have an elevator here and you can see it is completed as far as the rib stitching goes. You can see there's a, a special tape that goes down over the rib and that is to prevent these, uh, the stitching from ripping the fabric. So that's the first thing it's put down and then it's rib stitched. You can see I have three ribs on here. And again, this rib stitching just keeps the fabric attached to the elevator because in flight it may have a tendency to lift up or balloon, which you certainly don't want. So it, uh, the stitching keeps the fabric secured to the control surface. Now this is the stitching here. There's two different kinds. This is round and you can get a flat cord. I'm using this because this is actually a roll that I had from my Rans S10, the first airplane that I built and rib stitched. Uh, so it's been sitting in a, in a box in a bag for 20 years or so, <laughs> but it's still good. Uh, it is a waxed string, so it's, it gets kind of sticky after a while and especially with working with it. Now, one of the things I would recommend if you're using well, any system you're using, I'm using a Stuart Systems, and they have a, a manual or a PDF you can download for free on their website. And what I did was I downloaded it, printed it out, and then I took it to the, the local UPS store or Kinko's or something like that, and I had it kind of made into a nice booklet here. But what I wanted to show you is the booklet or the, the instructions here kind of give you the, the rundown on the whole system as far as covering. But as far as rib stitching, they have a pretty handy chart in here in order to determine the spacing between the stitches. So in this manual on page 20, you can see the chart here. And what it does, it gives you the spacing and then the, the miles per hour here. And, you know, I've never had this pits past probably 180 miles an hour. I really don't even know what the top speed is on it. But they have two lines here. They have the the spacing that you're going to use for for parts that are in the slipstream. So obviously all of these tail pieces would be in the slipstream. And then uh, you have the other one up here, which is a little bit wider spacing for parts that might not be in the slipstream. So you can see here, if we just go to 200 miles an hour and we go up the chart here, it's just a tad under two inch spacing. What I did was I went to 225. So you come to 225, you come up, hit the line and come over and you're looking at about an inch and a half. So, although I don't think my pits will ever get to 225, you never know, it might in a, in a dive, but uh, that's what I used was 225 because that protects me basically at all speeds. Uh, like I said, I don't think my airplane will ever get that fast, but if it does, I know that the rib stitching is good for that speed. All right, step one, once you have on this, this tape, this is how I lay out the, the pattern. I'm gonna go in an inch and a half to make my first stitch. And the reason I picked an inch and a half is because this is a one inch tube on the front here. So I need to go at least an inch to clear the tube and then about a half inch after that. So to make sure I start them all the same, I use this little tool here and I'll put a mark with a pencil on here at an inch and a half. And I'll do that on each one. So now I have my first uh, inch and a half line marked there. Then what I'm going to do is come back here with a ruler, line up the marks, and I'm just going to make a pencil line over each one. Now because I'm going an inch and a half spacing, what I'm going to do is put this on here, and I'm going to mark an inch and a half, inch and a half, inch and a half, all the way up. And that's the last one I can do because if I go another inch and a half, it's, there's no room there for a stitch. So I'll do that to all three. I now have all three ribs marked with the inch and a half spacing. And again, I'm gonna come back here with my ruler. And what I'm doing is I'm just putting a, a pencil line over each one. And I'll show you what that looks like up close. So here you go. You can see I just have a pencil line going across the rib and I want it 
I don't need it too long, but just enough to work because I'm going to mark a, a hole there and a hole there on either side of the rib. All right, so I'll just continue up the rib here until they are all marked. All right, done. They're all marked. Now I get to poke holes in it. I have a little needle here, and what I'm going to do is poke a hole on either side of the rib. Now it's a little bit tricky on this airplane because of the shape of these ribs. It's not a flat rib like this. It's flat on the top, and then both sides kind of curve down. So you kind of have to feel in the fabric where to poke the hole, because where it, it it stops touching the fabric and slopes down. You have to have that needle on the outside of that. So what I do is I kind of press on here, find the edge, I'm gonna poke a hole. And we do it on both sides, right about there, here, and here. Now, so you don't have to watch me do all these. What I'll show you is I did these six holes here and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a pencil and I'm going to carefully poke the hole again to make it a little bit bigger. And this does two things. It makes the hole bigger for the needle that we're going to use. And it also makes it easier to see because of the, the lead that gets on there. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to mark all of these ribs and poke the holes in the fabric. All right, now in order to get ready for rib stitching, I have a different needle here and you can see it has a curve on it. And you'll see why that curve is important in a minute. But the first thing I need to do is cut off a length of string. And you wanna make sure you have enough. If you don't, it's not really a big deal. You can start and end these ribs or rib lacings anywhere. But I like to make sure I have enough string to do the, a whole rib with one string. And then the first thing you do is put the string in a needle and just tie it off. So I'll tie a, a square knot on here. And I like to just cut off the big tail. All right, so now I have my needle with a large piece of string on it. All right, I'm going to show you the first knot. Now, guys, I want to really point this out. My goal here is not to teach you how to rib stitch. There's a million videos online that show you. In fact, I'll leave a link to the one, uh, the best one that I've found so far that, that really kind of gives you a detailed look. So, again, my goal is not to show you exactly what I'm doing or teach you how to do this. I'm just going to kind of show you the process of rib stitching. You can start with any rib, doesn't matter. I'm just going to start with this one because it's right here. So, but the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put that needle down here and I'm going to go through the bottom of the wing or the, <laughs> the elevator. And I'm going to come up on the other side of the rib through the hole that I already pre-punched. And I'm coming up and I'm just using that needle to locate the hole that I have in there. So we're going to bring this all the way through until there's just a about a five or six inch tail on the right hand side first thing is going to do a square knot so right over left and then left over right and we have a square knot we'll cinch that up and i'm just going to bring it down a little bit again this this string is waxy and you'll get wax all over your fingers and sometimes you'll get a build up on the knot you kind of have to take off and then there's what's called a a, a half half hitch i think they call it and that's just, if you can see, I'm bringing a string through the legs here and then through the loop and then bringing it up. Now, what I'm gonna, going to do is lock this by pulling over here. And then, since this is the first knot, there's another half hitch on here. So we bring the needle under, we're gonna bring it through and then uh, through the loop here. Lock it up. And then I'm going to cut the tail off of the short one here. 
And what I'm going to do, I'm probably gonna block the camera as I do this, but I'm gonna take this needle and just carefully push this knot into uh, the hole. You can see it's in there. I have a little bit of that tail sticking up. I'm just gonna try to push in there. There we go. Now, we're gonna rib stitch the, the rest of this rib and this is why we have a curved needle. I'm gonna put this needle through this hole, alongside the rib, and then out the other hole, just like that. I'm gonna push it through, and then I'm gonna pull this all the way through. Now this string is running alongside the rib. And then what I'm going to do is come over to this, to the right side of the string. Again, I'm gonna go down, and under or out the bottom hole, I'm going to come up through the top. Now, what a lot of people do is they call this the island in the palm tree, which is kind of a, a neat way to remember it. So I'm going to pull it through just until I have a little bit of an island. And then this is the palm tree. To me, when I think of this, I think of this as a, a golf course green and then the flag. So but whatever little story you want to tell yourself. The next step is, is I, don't, I hope you guys can see this, but you do this kind of like twisting moment or movement with the needle and you're going to pull this down into a triangle. So you can see the triangle there. And then the needle loops around. It goes under here in front of this one. And then you pull this one all the way through. And then you scooch up that knot and then this one here, which is your palm tree, you're gonna pull away from you like that. And again, I just kind of take that, that knot and rotate it under there. And then we're gonna repeat a thousand more times. Goes through there, we're gonna pull it all the way through. I'm gonna bring it down on the right side through the pre-punched hole in the bottom. I'm gonna make my little island come up from the bottom. And when you come up, you wanna be a little careful you don't just poke through the fabric, so go slow. Coming up through the hole. And again, there's my, my island and my palm tree. So it goes under the, the south side of the island, they say, over the top or over the north end and then down. Oops, I screwed that up. All right, under here and down. There we go, we get our triangle. Then we go under here, in front of here, over here. Pull it tight. And then this one, pulls it there. And again, the little knot goes in here. And see, here's a little buildup of wax. I'm gonna take that off of there. That's the problem with this, this string is you get little balls of wax every once in a while. And that's it. I mean, that's, that's what you do. You go all the way up. And on the, on the last one, there's another half hitch. So let me finish this and I'll show you the last one. Now I've gone all the way up to the last one here, and I'm at the point where if there were more uh, stitches to do, I would insert this in here, come up through the next hole just like I kept on doing. But since this is the last one, we do a, another half hitch. So we just put it under the, the last stitch, bring it out, and then we're gonna go through here again, pull it tight. We're gonna cut off the string. And now again, we want to hide that little tail, so I'm just going to kind of push it down into the, the wing. There we go. So that rib is all done. This rib probably took me, I don't know, two minutes, three minutes to do. Once you kind of get that knot down, it really starts going fast. Well, as I was editing this video, I realized halfway through that for some reason my camera stopped picking up the audio from the microphone. The microphone is showing that it's working, but 
for some reason the camera is using the built-in microphone instead of this one so I don't know why I don't know what's going on with it I have two of these and I've tried both of them and nothing seems to work so anyway this video is kind of a just an overview of the process that's used to take a raw frame and get it covered, rib stitched, and then ready for paint. So all of the stitching is done on all of the tail parts. The next step is to add this two inch pink tape over the, the ribs and then around the back edge here. And I have a three inch pink tape that I'll use along the, the leading edge. The leading edge gets a three inch instead of two just because it's a, a, a bigger uh, pipe or tube, not a pipe, a tube. <laughs> so anyway, if I can figure out this audio, I'll uh, get that fixed and then I'll make another video kind of showing you the next step here in the covering process.